hello everyone so i'm pretty sure you all have played or at least seen flappy bird game so i'm going to create something like this uh, in unreal engine using c plus plus from scratch so here actually my idea is to kind of familiarize you guys with uh, the c plus plus programming rather than just creating a fully finished polished game so yeah let's get started so first let's create a new project yeah i'll select a blank template and in c plus plus flappy bird and hit create so by the way i'm using unreal engine 5.03 but i don't think that would really matter what the exact version you are using because these basic functions won't change much in between different versions of the unreal engine so i i'm pretty sure you can follow these steps in unreal engine 4 as well right so here is the visual studio project and also from side the unreal engine also open so yeah before we get started let me just switch to a basic level but this is not relevant for the program work we are going to do but this is much simpler okay now first let's add a new c++ class and as the parent class I'll select uh, pawn because this is going to be our player controlled actor so the bird actually mm, maybe not exactly a bird but this is the player controlled entity so I'm going to select pawn because we need to give input from a player controller so next I'll name this pw but PW stands for four and create right so after adding the class this live coding console comes up and it starts compiling uh, but actually I wish to disable this live coding because uh, it usually gives problems when I restart the project usually the changes are gone things like that happens when this live coding is active so we have to disable it yeah yeah live coding i'm gonna disable it but i'll wait until this process is completed right live coding succeeded let me disable it and here in the Visual Studio project we have to reload in order to add new classes so let's reload and the sources flappy bird now we have pw bird file and header file so right so we need first thing we need would be uh, a mesh in this spawn component in order to represent player character or the word and then we will need of course a camera and then to attach the camera we will need a camera boom or spring arm component so here let's start a private section and under uh, I need to add mesh so that has to be a U prop uh, that I need to be able to see that uh, when I create a child blueprint class of this C++ class as well so to make it visible for blueprints I'll mark this as a U property 
with uh, the uh, and also uh, I should be able to edit whatever the mesh that I'm going to put here so I'll mark it as edit anywhere mm, mesh yeah this is going to be mesh but it should be from the type of use that mesh component pointer mesh and then we need uh, another u property visible anywhere so here i'm going to define a spring arm component but here we don't need to edit it so just see having it visible should be enough so visible anywhere do spring arm component this is also a pointer let's name it camera and of course we need a camera Your property um visible any oh no let's make it edit anywhere because i might need to change some properties for the camera so mm, so therefore i'll make it edit anywhere your camera component camera so here we get an error we need to include camera component so camera camera component yeah this would do uh -huh. maybe let's remove these marks and use them like this like other hash includes okay so here for this also we need to include include game this is in game framework spring arm component this should be correct oh forgot the dot dash but if you don't know uh, if you don't remember you don't really have to remember these uh, just simply search use print um, include it's just one search away see there yeah. but it is correct no spelling mistakes right now that i have defined uh, variables to hold each basic items that we need but we haven't still created the actual objects so if i go to the pwbird.cpp here we have the implementations of these take begin play and constructor so i'm interested in the constructor here we are going to create objects for those mesh camera and spring arm components why this is shown as an error because i did not did it was automatically there so yeah anyway let's just do one compilation compile and see if everything is all right before adding the object Compiling here, we can see the outlook our uh, output log. Ah, oh, this is okay. Hmm. 
we shouldn't put header first before that after that that should be the final all right now actually this one should also be fixed anyway let's compile again okay compilation shall be successful um right now let's head back here and do some more coding this is still showed as an error okay it's just an intelligence error so we can ignore it because if tsa solution has not finished passing processing result may be inaccurate all right i oh, know it's gone so anyway what i did to force reloading it was press control and click so it goes to the wherever the place in the parent character parent class it was defined so it kind of refresh the links i guess so yeah it's fixed now now we need to create actually create these components so let's start with the mesh uh, here in the constructor mesh equals create default sub object use static mesh component we need to give a name text okay and let's attach it to the root component mesh set up attachment root component so whatever the default root this component will be attached to the default root and then we need um we need to create the spring arm camera boom camera boom equals create default sub object here is spring arm component <coughs> name is text camera boom all right and we need to attach this uh, uh, let's attach this to the mesh so camera boom set up attachment mesh and then we need the actual camera so camera equals create default sub object your camera component name uh, let's call it player camera right uh, and then we need to attach the camera to the spring arm component or the camera boom so camera setup attachment we need to attach it to camera boom and also you can see a second optional uh, parameter so we need to attach this to the end of the camera boom so we can use use print um, component uh, f socket no it should be higher socket name socket name 
so this gives us the name of the socket at the end of the spring arm so that's where we need to attach it socket name all right now save all and go back here compile compilation complete so here oh, we can see the classes so let's create a blueprint class so that we can easily manage this in the in our project create blueprint class based on pw word so i will create a new folder blueprints and then create blueprint class based on pw word let's create it on the blueprint so i'll name this pp but right so here we can see all the components camera boom and the camera so you can see for the mesh we don't see anything because we haven't assigned a mesh actually we can assign a mesh through the code through the c++ code but it's not convenient we we can either we will either have like set up a, give a path in the content browser and load it or we can add a separate variable to hold the static mesh reference but when we do that again we will have to give a reference like a path to load it or if we make it editable from the blueprint itself it will not be uh, initialized when the construction uh, constructor is called so it's better to just edit it here so um, yeah here we don't have any meshes but the meshes in the engine is available to us but let's just make a copy of uh, let's just use this sphere and copy it to our models copy it to our project so that we can assign different materials and do uh, things like that make sure to copy don't move So yeah, I don't need it now. Mm. SPA is selected, so let's assign it. Okay, now we have a player mesh. So uh, if I drag and drop this into the world, now it's like this. So let's say i want to see the player character maybe like somewhere like here in the screen so we can see incoming buildings or whatever the things that blocks the player's view and also we can move the camera further away so we can see a large area so we can actually set this target arm length instead of 300 maybe something like 600 uh, actually we can de set these values inside the C++ script as well but I don't think we need to do that here because it's more convenient here and I don't see anything wrong with doing it that way but of course if you want to see let me show it camera boom target down length 600 f you can set it do it like that no issue um, right and also I said we I need to I need the character to be visible somewhere over here so for that actually we can do this 
socket to offset in y let's see 100 maybe not enough 200 not enough 200 yeah that seems okay so that also you can set through the C++ but let's just do it here and just to make it more look a bit more interesting let me create a simple material color red Okay, now if I play the game, oh, if I play the game, this is not actually considered as the player character because uh, here in the world settings, I have, I don't have set any game mode and so the default game mode will be applied but here we can use this auto process play option. So this will be considered as the player character or player pawn in this case. So yeah, so when in the Flappy Bird game, yeah, usually this ball should start falling down. So now let's see how to implement that part. When I press a space, it should basically jump. So in order to have the jump action, Let's go under inputs and we don't have any actions defined. So let's add one named jump and as the key space. Right now, how do we bind it to our pawn? So for that, here under this we already have this uh, setup player input component function uh, we are overriding it because this is defined in the parent pawn class so we are overriding it so here um, player input component point action so we need to give the action name and of course that is jump and then we need to give uh, e input event key event so input event let's use released so that means whenever we press and release the space key or the whatever the jump key we have assigned this uh, action will be fired I have released okay and the user car class means a reference to this object this pawn and better to have some space and next we need to give uh, the function that we need to call or that we need to bind into this action but I haven't I forgot to define the function first so let's define it Let's define it here. Mm. Wait, jump. I don't think I would need it to call in, call through blueprints. So let's not define any U function macros here. Just jump. Should be enough for now at least. 
right okay now it is created here we can now give the function uh, signature of this function that means this is how we give it and a pw but this is the name of the class colon colon jump this apw bird is the class name you can see it here this one so right now this action is bound this function is bound to the jump action so to test if this is working before implementing the actual jumping let's add a ue log um, log temp the category let's print it as a warning right compilation complete let's play and if i press space you see jumping in the console here so that part is working okay back in here now uh, how do we implement jumping so in order to implement jumping uh, i am going to enable simulate physics for this object but in order to simulate physics let's check what's the default oh it's block all dynamics so it should work so right in the begin play mesh new layer physics here we have set simulate physics set it to true but uh, uh, one thing is this uh, flappy bird type of a game so here this we are meant to play this like a 2d game so it should only move this way and the jumping should happen, uh, happen only up and down so the ball should not be moving a cross x direction or y direction because of this physics through the physics so um, we can uh, give these constraints here also if you look into the physics physics under constraints you can see log position log rotation these kinds of things so but let's do this here we can access those things like this mesh uh, body instance block so we need to block both x translation Uh, X translation this should be true similarly mesh body instance look y translation that also needs to be true Mm. also we don't need it to rotate otherwise the camera will also rotate as the camera is attached to the mesh for the instance block rotation 
also true so it will just uh, move only in vertical axis through physics so and when we do jump in we just need to uh, apply some force upwards so mesh for the instance set linear velocity as I said it should be upward so f vector up vector multiplied by uh, here we need to have some values so maybe it's better to define a variable that allows us to change the jump force or jump speed so let's head to the header file and you property add it anywhere because I'm planning to change this inside the program to figure out the optimum value float jump force so as a default value I put 100 and jump force also we have this pool p auto away it's by default true so let's just leave it like that wait do i need to refine it okay all right save this and go back here compile all right compilation complete uh, we can see the jump force here let's play when i press the space it jumps a little bit but not enough so we can change this now let's try 600 oh we got some warnings but uh, let's just figure out the jump in right not enough Right, that's good. Uh, but I noticed one thing. While the character uh, ball is going moving down, if I press a space, it doesn't really uh, move the ball up. So I think we can fix that with here. But, oh no, it's out of it. Ah, sorry, I <laughs> missed. There are three ball variables const vector. Uh, uh, other than the new velocity add to current and auto awake so auto awake is true that's why add to current let's make this false so that will just override the current velocity of the ball with the velocity we give here so no matter what even if the ball is falling down if i press the space it will go up 
and it will always have a constant move up velocity so that should be better for our case okay compilation complete now yeah no matter where I press the space you can see it's jumping up okay so yeah actually it took a lot longer than I thought but I'm going to stop this episode right here and continue with the rest from the next episode so thanks for watching as always project files will be available for the download in the patreon page link would be in the description below and if you like to support my work you can get the membership of the patreon see you in another episode goodbye